Hi, folks. I'm Dennis Oley. Thanks so much for joining us. Our guest wanted to be a movie star. He even wanted to be a twin. He became a boy pilot, a political activist, and a writer for life. Twenty-six novels, six plays, a whole bunch of screenplays, and 200 essays. A personal conversation with Gore Vidal next. This is America. This is America is made possible by Hyundai Motor America, maker of the 2007 Sonata. The National Education Association, the nation's largest advocate for children and public education. The city of Paducah, Kentucky, located in McCracken County, home of the Paducah Artist Relocation Program. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The CTC Foundation. And the American Life TV Network. Gore Vidal, welcome home. Well, that is a very friendly thing to say. Yeah, I am home. This is where it all started for me, in Rock Creek Park. You said you lived in two houses, huh? I lived in my grandfather's house in Rock Creek, Broad Branch Road, it was called. And he was in the Senate then. And I used to, he was a blind man from the age of 10. I used to lead him onto the floor, into the cloakrooms and so on. And the other house was across the river, across the Potomac, at uh, Marywood, with my stepfather, Mr. Auchincloss, by whom my mother had two children, and I shall be seeing the daughter, my half-sister. When you think of Washington, what is your fondest memory, way back then, when you were a kid coming up, and what was the worst memory? Well, the worst was Halloween. <laughs> Why so? I don't know. A bunch of us went berserk and just went around tearing up things. <laughs> and I suddenly understood the entire Nazi movement. I understood all kinds of huh. mass hysteria. Huh. It was just, you know, a bunch of kids about 11 or 12 years old going berserk. Mm -hmm. We were encouraged never to do it again. I never did do it again. Mm -hmm. I remember that. My first memory... <laughs> The profound one is my grandfather being sworn in the Senate for, I think, his fifth or sixth term. Mm. And that must have been, well, he was first elected in 1907, so I don't know, I felt six. And the Senate chamber in those days had a skylight. A it was a green. So it was like being in a great aquarium. <laughs> and I always thought of the senators as essentially large fish, you know, <laughs> weaving their way across <laughs> to the cloakrooms and so on. And that was vivid. What was, it, what was the, the greatest lesson you learned from your grandfather? Well, the one he wanted me to learn, which I was seared into my memory, he said, you know, I would read to him all the mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. and uh, mostly history, politics. He said, never forget that this country is based on only one thing, due process of law. Mm. And I, that just has stayed with me ever since. And the other day when they got rid of habeas corpus, which took some doing, but it was done after 700 years, we lost it. And I kept thinking of my grandfather and I could hear his voice in my head, due process of law. Mm. Without that, we are nothing. So that was my, that was my millennial message. When you use habeas corpus, some people might not know the term. Well, bring the body into court uh -huh. is one way of putting it. Right. That you cannot be deprived of life, liberty, pursuit of happiness even, without due process of law. The current administration has seen to it that this has been abandoned. Now, habeas corpus, which is a Latin phrase, which is you have your right to a day in court. You must be, you, they can't lock you up without saying, what, what did you do wrong? 
and a jury will determine that, or a judge, whatever is the, is whatever is the venue. And uh, it is the basis of all Anglo-Saxon law, from which we descend as former colonies of England. And we got rid of most things English, but we kept some very basic things. And one was Magna Carta, signed at Runnymede by King John. And that gave us our liberties. Mm. And now we have a strange little attorney general, Mr. Gonzalez, who's absolutely so like Truman Capote. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't bear it when every time I see him on television, he thinks he's, he thinks he's attorney general of Mexico. And he got rid of it for us. But you, we'll get it back. You were not fond of either of the two, I gather. Uh, who, of, of King John? <laughs> <laughs> no, Truman Capote and the Attorney General. No, I'm not fond of either one of them. Uh, you used the term uh, a, a few minutes ago referring to the Halloween escapade as uh, berserk. Uh, in something, uh, that uh, a sentence that jumped out at me in, in your book, Point-to-Point uh, -point Navigation, you used the term that you said the federal government has gone berserk. Well, I'll say it has, and... Uh... I had never thought to see so many of our ancient rights just being dismissed, nor has the media ever been more craven and more corrupted. And I'm talking about, I mean, when Congressman Conyers, the ranking Democrat of the Judiciary Committee in the House, I hope he's head of it now, uh, he went up to see what had gone wrong in Ohio with a lot of investigators in the 04 election. And he came back with a report, which was published by Chicago Press. I wrote a preface to it. It's how I know something about the history of the book. And now this is very serious. You know, my grandfather would be outraged. The whole point to a republic is that the voice of the people is expressed through elections. If you allow one to be stolen on such a scale, not just the state of Ohio, but other states were at play, as was Florida, notoriously, in the year 2000. Where is the press? Where is the media? Where is Walter Lippmann when we need him to remind us who we are? This is a republic, and there's a republic based upon the general franchise of more and more people as the years pass. Minorities that were excluded are included. A majority, like women, were ex suddenly included. It was a great battle, but it was done. And that was called, was called liberalism. Mm. Liberalism is a word which is defined in Webster's Dictionary as those activities which tend toward a greater democracy. How you can demonize a word like that, I mm. don't know. It's a, it's a great PR trick, and it's been done. But uh, sad to say, it is, uh, let us say it's in jeopardy. With the election of 2006, uh, did that give you a cause for some renewed optimism? Well, yes, of course it did. It's, I am not partisan. I don't give, care at all about either of the two political parties. I rather that would, would surprise people who have just heard what you have to say. Well, it would surprise them, but if they're surprised that I want to restore the Constitution, then I think they, ought, they should move south to Mexico or someplace where they'd be happier, you know. Mm -hmm which is a bigger mess than anything that we've achieved. No, it's uh, either you believe in a democratic process, which in a republic is that you do elections that are not stolen or carefully guarded. It's, these things are sacred. And you can't, can't take the country seriously unless you know, you're relaxed about the voting process. And to watch these people go around selling Diebold and Sequoia and Triad, I, I've written about them, and I've got to know quite a lot about electronic machinery, and it is not to be trusted. Let me throw out a few words and just free associate. If I say the word America, what comes to your mind? Italy. Well, America comes from Am Amerigo. <laughs> <laughs> Claims, the Italians claim to have discovered this. Actually, the Vikings did, but <laughs> we Italians got in on the act. Uh, you spent a lot of time in Italy, didn't you? Yeah, I had a place in uh, south of Italy, mm -hmm. near, near Malfi. But I also had a place in 